Hi, my name is Nathan Hara. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Geneva. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the online platform DACE to analyze radial velocity data. Uh, DACE is a platform which ga gathers a lot of tools relevant for the analysis of exoplanets, in particular of uh, RD. Uh, it's uh, financed by the Swiss Institute Planetes here. Uh, this project is led by uh, uh, Professor Damien Segranzon here at the University of Geneva. And there are four people who work uh, on this platform, uh, Nicolas Pouchacher, Fabien Lignat, Julien Bernier, and uh, Jean-Baptiste Belly. Okay, now let's get started. Here, um, I'm on the DACE website, and I, here you have the address of the, this website. And I'm going to the uh, observation, observations icon. In observations, I have uh, several boxes, uh, photometry, uh, high resolution spectroscopy, imaging, atmospheric spectroscopy observability, and radio velocity. Um, as a first example, I am going to use 51 peg. Okay, now I have uh, the 51 peg data. Uh, here is the radial velocity data corresponding to different instruments. Uh, for instance, uh, in bright orange, I have the high res data. Uh, in red, I have the Hamilton data published in 1997. In, in, um, in uh, green, I have the Hamilton data published in 2006. Uh, same for LOD. So you, you see that you have duplicates of the data, uh, data which is included in, you have data with the same timestamps in this um, time series and in this time series as well. This comes from the fact that in days you might have data available from the same instruments but with different data reduction softwares. For the analysis, you don't want to have two times the data with different DRS. So what you can do is to go to data selection and um, unselect the data that you don't want. Um, here, I'm going to unselect the oldest uh, Hamilton data and um, also the DRS TACOS uh, data for LOD. I'm, I'm keeping only the data which is published. Furthermore, I'm applying a night beaming, which means that uh, for a given instrument, data points taken within the same nights um, will be averaged. Now I click on Apply Data Selection. OK, now I have uh, the radial velocity data that I'm going to analyze. Uh, before that, I can take a look at other ancillary indicators, such as the S-index. <coughs> Here, the S-index is available only for high res. So uh, I don't have uh, the data points for the other instruments. <coughs> Let's go back to the radial velocity. Here you see that this figure has changed and it's because it's the periodogram of the data which is printed here. So if this is radial velocity, then you will have the periodogram of the radial velocity. If it's the S-index, you have the periodogram of the S-index. Now you have a very clear signal in the periodogram at four point today, which is no surprise because it's the first exoplanet uh, detected. You also have two um, two signals here, and this comes from the sampling. Um, in radial velocity, the data points are sampled approximately every day, so that you they are almost evenly sampled, not exactly. <coughs> so. Um, if there is a signal here, you will expect uh, signals with a frequency difference, which is approximately equal to one divided by uh, one uh, sidereal day. You can explore this also with the spectral window, which tells you wh where the aliases are going to be in terms of frequency difference. And for it to be more convenient to see, you can directly clink, click on um, the peak and click on add aliases. This will show you the positions of the alias, meaning if you have a signal here, you will have also signals at these two frequencies. 
I could select another frequency, and meaning that if I have signal, uh, for, for instance, if I have signal here, then I would expect also signal in these locations. So these are the aliases corresponding to one year, and this is these are the aliases uh, corresponding to uh, one day. Um, okay, um, now what I can do is to search for additional signal. Uh, okay, no, so first, one more thing. When I look at this peak on the periodogram, I have several informations, several pieces of information. Um, and in particular, I have the log 10 FAP, the fourth uh, line in, in this box, <coughs> which is the um, false alarm probability. And, and so the lowest it is, the higher is the confidence in your detection. Here, the false alarm probability is below 10 to the minus 16. So it's, uh, this signal is extremely clear. I can confidently say that there is something. And I can fit it uh, with the add Keplerian uh, feature. Now I have a rough fit of the Keplerian and I can refine this fit. Why would I want to refine this fit? Because uh, here I have three instruments and um, they all have a certain offset. Maybe I want to, to fit the offsets of these instruments along with the parameters of the, the planet. Uh, for that, I'm going to click on the fit icon here. And what this does is for all the parameters in any of these uh, areas, that have the fit box checked, it will do a joint fit of the data. Okay, now um, I might think that the nominal uncertainties of each of my instrument uh, uh, are not well estimated. Maybe they are underestimated. So to remedy this, I'm clicking on the noise uh, box and I'm adding in the fit a free jitter term for uh, the Hamilton data I have, high res and LOD data. Now I'm clicking again on fit. And you see that there was uh, some power at low frequency, but now it's dumped. And now I have a peak uh, very close to one day. Anything that is close to one day or one year or one month uh, is suspicious because it might come from the motion of the Earth so, uh, it might, it might, or the Moon. So it might come from the observing conditions. And especially for old instruments like uh, LOD or um, uh, at least old data from LOD, Hamilton, and uh, Hybris is a little bit more recent. You, you, you want to be extra careful with signals that might come from the uh, instrument. Okay, so to investigate the origin of this signal, I'm going to isolate every, every instrument. Here I'm unselecting uh, Hamilton and Hi-Res uh, so that I only have LOD data. <coughs> now I only have the LOD data, I, I fit uh, the model and I have a very clear signal at 355 days with an alias at 0.995 days, which is the location of the peak that we had before. Okay. Now, what if I do the same with the Hamilton data? In the Hamilton data, I have a, a trend. Sorry. That I can remove. <coughs> um, but also, can see that I have an alias also at the sidereal day. So I'm not sure, in fact, if I have a signal there, which I can see there, or uh, the other way around, or maybe both. But there, there seems to be a significant effect. And finally, in uh, high res, what do I see? High res, there is nothing. Nothing is significant. The highest peak has very low uh, false alarm probability. <coughs> so uh, the, the Hamilton and LOD jointly seem to be responsible for the 
the peak that I see in the combined uh, analysis uh, here close to one. Okay, and uh, now uh, based on this analysis, um, we there appears to be a very clear planet at 4.2 days. So we confirmed the result that has recently given the Nobel Prize to Didier Kelo and, uh, and Michel Mayer. <coughs> and um, this concludes this first tutorial on the DACE platform. Uh, the next one will deal with a little more advanced example and uh, more advanced features. <coughs>